The first two rounds of 2023 set a record for the highest attended opening fortnight of AFL footy. This was a testament to all 18 sides. Well, except for one. On a pretty warm but clear day, only 8,169 people, nice, rocked up to the Sydney showgrounds for round one. Even counting the 22 people who didn't show up for the second half, seemingly embarrassed they all came out wearing the same shirt, that was barely half the number that the Gold Coast Suns attracted. The footage was embarrassing, a sea of orange seats. This is a team that has, despite having the smallest stadium by a large margin, never got a crowd of 16,000 for a non-derby match. There's been only three seasons where they've even half filled it. In fact, they average larger crowds in Canberra, a city a 20th the size of its home market. It makes you wonder what the atmosphere must be like at this sporting cemetery. Well, wonder no more. Thanks to Adelaide being an employment wasteland for the under 30s, I've upped sticks to the Harbour City's western suburbs and have had to pick a new shit team to disappoint me in real time. Yep, I'm a Giants member, and I'm going to show you what it's like to be in the inner sanctum of the least attended team in the AFL era, assuming this video doesn't get my membership revoked. Spoiler alert, I actually had a good time. I'll be starting with the very next home game after this. And this too, I guess. Yikes. Much like my, I guess, beloved Crows, the 2023 Giants are a team you probably don't want to support sober, so a train to the ground is the wise choice. Thankfully, the Olympic Park station is a short walk from the ugliest light towers in Australia, and my local station is the departure point for the T7. I'm there in 20 minutes pretty easy. Firstly, big shout out to the Giants membership helpline for, uh, for helping me with a couple of ticketing issues. It was genuinely a great experience, uh, though I've got no idea why they're allocating seats right as round three is kicking off. This was allocated as the Giants special Easter match, with the Easter show being held just outside the ground. I was expecting a big crowd, but what do you know, a bit of rain came and put a literal dampener on everything. Entering the ground, though, was a piece of cake. Five seconds, and you're at your seats. Different membership packages grant you different seating areas. Because I have a pathological hatred of my own money, I got the Prevo package. The seats are, well, equally orange as the others, but still, at least I have level one access to grand final tickets should the Giants make them this year. <laughs> <laughs> this is my view, and I'm within shouting distance of Callan Ward, the guy who wants to marry Dua Lipa, and whoever the hell else is on the Giants as they run out from the race to the big, big sound. As for the atmosphere, well, this is what the place looked like an hour before kickoff half an hour before, and at the first ball up. I had a solid 20 unused seats ahead of me and I was in the third row. The crowd was louder than I expected. But that being said, it still felt like a Carlton home game a lot of the time. The atmosphere was the most family-friendly I've been to, though, with a particularly bad umpiring call met with this absolute gem, and I quote, Our language has been good, but this is too much. You're a dickhead. Fantastic stuff. Beautiful. It felt like a pleasant blend of suburban footy and the Adelaide Oval. And everyone's pretty friendly, with no one calling me out for being a bell end for wearing a shirt with the orange team written on it. I actually got some suggestions to market it, so hey, let me know if you actually would want one of these. The assistant coaches wander around like free-range chooks. I bumped into Jason McCartney outside the chip stall. Actually, that brings me to... I've got a direct point of comparison for this. Adelaide's Hindmarsh Stadium, which draws a similar crowd despite being half the size, 
Lines can be long there, but it isn't too painful with a decent selection and seat to eat time all around the ground. The big ticket item this weekend was $2 hot chips, an Easter special which tasted pretty good as stadium chips go, but there was also gelato which sold predictably poorly on a wet 19 degree day. You also have hot dogs, burgers, and that's really it, unless you seek out the kebabish on the other wing. Not ideal, but not terrible. Prices are pretty decent as well, even notwithstanding the $2 specials. The members bar is nice enough, but even for the club with the lowest attendance in the AFL, seat space ran out quick. I couldn't find one and I was there 50 minutes before the bounce. Beers are 8 50 for members, which, let's face it, is pretty great. Plus, while seated, if you can get one, you've got a great view of the ground. There were bugger all lines before the game, even 10 minutes before the bounce, but during it, oh, there was a fair old queue. That being said though, pretty much everywhere you're going to get food, you can see all of the ground from anyway, so you're not missing anything. The loos were typical showground spec, small, clumsy and awkward, but with enough of them to stem flows everywhere, notwithstanding the pun. Basically, even if you're going up to get food, a drink, or have a slash, you're not really going to miss a lot of the action. So, let's talk about said action. While the Giants had just let West Coast's longest finals abstainers run through them like a pre-game banner, Carlton had just finished disposing of the reigning premiers. Pre-game signs suggested that even Dignitas wouldn't get us out of this one. And yet... Despite the Giants not being able to hit a forward target to save themselves, and this absolute disaster piece by Lockie Ash, like frame that in the fucking Louvre, the Giants never found themselves more than 15 down and spent a lot of the first half in front. The ground condition didn't help matters. Pockmarked and scuffed, it had all the integrity of chalk and was twice as slippery. They don't replace the surface or at least condition it until after the Easter show, so... Yeah, bad timing for a scruffy game like this. But fight the Giants did, queuing the loudest cheer of the evening when they went in front 11 minutes into the last. <laughs> Carlton rode a wave home and their victory was greeted with, sadly, a louder roar than from any of those in orange. Eight thousand people, or in this case actually a few more, shouldn't overload a good transport infrastructure. I wouldn't know though as I went to the post-game member shindig. Having been to a few of the Crows ones, I knew what to expect. A few hundred, maybe a couple of thousand fans at a site basically adjoined to the stadium where the background milling of conversation is a constant dip. The players, if they appear at all, go up on stage, say a couple words, and then leave. That's not what I got. After a 20 minute walk, I was greeted with a small shop in a largely deserted and dimly lit outdoor centre. After kicking around a footy, which was provided for free, for about half an hour or so, more fans trickled in, and then I saw Harry Himmelberg in a speedo. Turns out the recovery pool is right next to the members area. Interesting. So a lot of the time you're viewing the members, if you know what I mean. Luckily every other player, bar Toby Green, Natch, covered up their meat and two Sherrins with a towel. After a little while though, a few players came out, did a nice Q&A, signed some stuff for the hundred or so people that were there, and that was that. Nice, pleasant experience. The biggest name there was Matty Flynn, far from the heights that were promised, but it was a good time. Cooper Hamilton even praised the orange team kit, so, you know, what a hero. Big ups, Cooper. Overall, I came away pretty satisfied. It's funny, in both this and the Marcus Marshall video, I've walked in thinking, oh, funny shit team, ha ha ha. Both times, I've walked out after falling in love with those teams. GWS have weaseled their way into being my second, uh, third team, and I'm looking forward to following their journey this year. And if you're ever in the neighbourhood, I'd recommend coming on down. It's different to literally anything else you can experience in the AFL. Come on and join the... Is that too corny?